Good morning, everyone. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, so uh, last class, uh, I think we have uh, completed about the uh, this bit. Okay, so last class we have completed about your uh, trickling filters, right? So <clears throat> today uh, we will go through your uh, after your trickling filter we have your uh, this activated sludge okay we have activated sludge process today we will discuss about this okay <clears throat> okay so basically your activated sludge process it is your uh, like it is also a process of your secondary treatment process, okay? Like we have a tricking filter we have learned. That one also was your secondary treatment process and this one is also your secondary treatment process, okay? But the like uh, the aer aerobic uh, or one is suspended and one is attached, okay? The microorganisms, those are one is attached to uh, the media and one is suspended. Okay, the difference we have learned in our next classes. Uh, sorry, we have a previous class we have already learned. Okay, so <clears throat> this activated sludge process. Okay, so it uh, let us uh, read. Okay, line by line, we will recap a little bit, then we will understand better. Okay, you see, the activated sludge process it provides an excellent method of treating either raw sewage or more generally the subtle sewage. Uh, the sewage that is the sewage effluent from the primary sedimentation tank is thus normally utilized in this process is mixed with 20 to 30 percent of whole volume of activated sludge which contains a large concentration of highly active aerobic microorganisms so here <clears throat> so whatever sewage effluent you got from primary sedimentation tank so that uh, sewage effluent it is you know that sewage is utilized it is utilized in this process and it is mixed with what 20 to 30 percent of its own volume of activated sludge okay so uh, this uh, activated sludge what it contains it contains a large concentration of your highly active aerobic microorganisms okay so <clears throat> in um, uh, simple language if uh, i tell you that is that this activated sludge process what happens here the microorganisms are present in a like there is an aeration tank and the oxidation of microorganisms they take place in the presence of oxygen okay so <clears throat> in simple language that is the main uh, like uh, working principle of an activated sludge process okay so uh, like the, the uh, microorganisms they get oxidized okay by the organic matter uh, in the presence of oxygen and then the excrement from that aeration tank it is sent to a you know like secondary settling tank there is one secondary settling tank and in that tank the there are in the, in the bottom of the tank you know some sludges are produced okay or sludge is formed so that sludge it is known as your activated sludge okay so <clears throat> let us uh, read it more uh, nicely here okay so here uh, we have uh, told that you know, the effluent that we got from the primary sedimentation tank that is you know mixed with the 20 to 30 percent of its own volume of what activated sludge okay so <clears throat> 
this mixture okay that mixture it enters an aeration tank as i just now i told there is one aeration tank and this mixture okay the sewage effluent and the mixture of the sewage effluent and the activated sludge it enters a aeration tank okay and where in that aeration tank what happens the microorganisms okay and the sewage they are mixed very nicely okay the microorganisms and the sewage they are mixed very nicely and uh, in the presence of what in the presence of air okay and uh, for about 4 to 8 hours they are constantly being mixed okay so <clears throat> under these conditions okay under these conditions the moving organisms or you can say the microorganisms the moving microorganisms they will oxidize okay they will oxidize uh, the organic matter that is present in the sewage okay and the this and this suspended and the colloidal matter and the, the in the uh, tank okay in the tank the suspended and the colloidal matter they will coagulate and they will form a precipitate okay they will coagulate and they will form a precipitate and that precipitate it will settle at the bottom of the septic tank okay so <clears throat> after that uh, uh, this uh, precipitate it settles down so that that settled sludge it is uh, like known as your activated sludge okay and a part of that activated sludge it is then again recycled okay it is again recycled and it is taken uh, or it is taken back to the aeration tank okay it is a part of the activated sludge it is again taken back to the aeration tank and it is mixed again with the sewage that is being treated okay so <clears throat> a part of it is taken back to the aeration tank and some part it is being disposed of in the river stream and all okay so this new activated sludge it is being you know like continuously produced by this process it is uh, like a portion of it is utilized and it is sent back to the aeration tank and some portion or you can say the excess portion is disposed of properly uh, along with your like primary treatment it is it is disposed of okay in the reverse stream and all okay so now <clears throat> the effluent Okay, the effluent that is uh, obtained uh, from the activated sludge plant, it is of very high quality, okay, and it is having a very low BOD. Then uh, that of a what trickling filter plant, okay, the effluent that you got from a trickling filter plant, okay, so that is having a little bit of higher, uh, per, uh, this higher amount of or higher percentage of BOD, but here in the activated sludge process, what happens, the BOD, it is generally low okay so be the and the bod removal here it is up to 80 to 95 percent okay bod removal in activated sludge process is 80 to 95 percent and the bacterial removal is up to 90 to 95 percent that means you can assume or you can imagine how much of accurate results this process is giving okay so here the bacteria removal is up to 90 to 95 <clears> percent <throat> and also here the land the area of land that is being used it is also very less okay the land area required for this uh, activated sludge plant is also very less and uh, in this process uh, what happens a uh, uh, some operations are necessary okay like it is written here a rather close degree of control is necessary in operation to ensure so here degree of control is very necessary in operation for what because uh, there is an ample supply of oxygen is present because this process or this treatment process is done only in the presence of oxygen okay and that there is intimate and continuous mixing of the sewage and the activated sludge so there it, you have to control the you in the operation process it should be in a very controlled process because there is an intimate and uh, continuous mixing of the sewage and the activated sludge and number three is what the treated is kept 
uh, the ratio of the volume of activated sludge added to the volume of sewage being treated is practically constant. Okay, so <coughs> so now um, there are like uh, different operations and uh, units uh, of an activated sludge plant. Okay, uh, there are different process and uh, units of an activated sludge plant like. Uh, um, I will show you. This is the flow diagram. Okay, this is the flow diagram for a conventional activated sludge plant giving high degree of treatment. Okay, so all those things we have learned, like from the first one is screens and grid chamber, then primary sedimentation tank, and after that, uh, there is one aeration tank. And from the aeration tank, uh, it is coming a secondary uh, sedimentation tank. Okay, so this part is your activated sludge plant. Okay, this part is your activated sludge plant. So there are different units or portions of a uh, activated sludge plant. Okay, so <clears throat> next is your like uh, in this uh, process. Okay, in this process. Uh, in, uh, this grid removal, screening, okay, and primary sedimentation, those three are considered very necessary for your activated sludge process. Okay, for a conventional activated sludge process, this grid removal, screening, and primary sedimentation are considered very important and very necessary. Okay, and in this process, it is you know it is very important to keep the sewage very fresh. Okay, uh, it is it is important to keep the sewage uh, as fresh as possible, or you could say that the detention period is also provided in the primary sedimentation tank. Okay, and this uh, this primary detention it may vary with the size of the plant and the characteristics of the sewage. Okay, and what is the overflow rate of a activated sludge plant? It is 40,000 liters per square meter of land area per day. Okay, and the depth is about 2.4 meter and the detention time is about 1.4 hours. Okay, this thing you can remember. This overflow rate, it is 40,000. Okay, uh, the depth is about 2.4 meter. And the detention time is about 1.4 hours. <clears throat> okay, so before uh, going to the next uh, uh, part, I would like to show you one video. You will see the video nicely. You will see the working principle of an activated sludge process. Then you will, I think you will understand something a little uh, better. Okay, so you, I am sharing the screen. Just wait. A molecular biology method, PCR, provides efficient and specific amplification for nucleic acid. Activated sludge is worldwide the most used suspended growth process in wastewater treatment. The treatment process can include different steps, but most commonly are screening and grit removal to filter out debris, primary clarifier for particle sedimentation, biological treatment with activated sludge consisting of an aeration basin, secondary clarifier and recycle stream, disinfection for final removal of germs and bacteria. Wastewater entering the aeration basin still contains organic matter such as food waste and fecal. Microorganisms in the raw water influent 
will colonize in the aeration tank and metabolize organic waste to ATP for further cell growth, as well as CO2 and water. As the microorganisms need oxygen to survive, the tank is aerated, for example, with diffuser systems. The amount of oxygen needed for biochemical processes is also known as the BOD value. BOD is a very important indicator for the level of wastewater pollution. To keep a good balance between the number of microorganisms, organic waste and oxygen, some microorganisms are settled down in the secondary clarifier. Adding flocculants will cause that microorganisms will clump together with particles and settle down as activated sludge. Some of the activated sludge is then recycled back to the aeration basin, whereas the rest is removed as waste sludge, thickened and then, for example, used as fertilizers. By recycling the activated sludge back into the aeration basin, the amount of microorganisms can be increased significantly, e.g. 30 times compared to the raw water influent. This is exactly the principle of activated sludge to accelerate biological degradation significantly in a confined space. The sludge recycling rate does not only affect the sludge volume, but also the sludge age. Young sludge, two to eight days, refers to microorganisms that metabolize organic waste as described before. Instead, older sludge, older than eight days, is used for nitrification processes to oxidize ammonium, NH4+, to nitrate, NO3 minus. The sludge age can also be expressed as the SRT, solid retention time. The SRT is the volume of the reactor multiplied with the concentration of solids divided by the excess sludge. The number of microorganisms present in the aeration basin and therefore the treatment capacity of an activated sludge plant is limited. The ratio of microorganisms and waste stream is also known as the MLSS, Mixed Liquor Suspended Solids Concentration. As higher the MLSS, as less volume is needed to remove BOD from the waste stream. The maximum MLSS concentration for activated sludge basins is about 3,500 mg per litre. However, by adding fixed film media into the aeration basin, also known as IFAS systems, the MLSS can be increased by up to 5,000 mg per litre, meaning the treatment performance can be increased by up to 50%. Please click on the following video link to see in detail how the activated sludge process can be upgraded with fixed film media systems. Thanks for watching, and if you like our 3 minute tutorials, please subscribe and don't forget to give a thumbs up. Okay, so you have watched the video. <clears throat> I think now it's a little bit of uh, clear. Okay, just wait. Okay. So you have seen the process or whatever I explained, it, it was shown in the video, okay? <clears throat> so now, um, okay, so uh, the aeration tanks, okay, we will study uh, the methods of aeration. So what are the methods of aeration? So like uh, it's written here, you see, the, from the primary sedimentation tank, the sewage, it flows to the aeration tank and it is mixed with the activated sludge then the aeration tank okay uh, they are normally rectangular in shape or you can see they are rectangular tanks and they are 3 to 4.5 meter deep okay and it is 4 to 6 meter wide and the length it, the range or uh, length range is between what 20 to 200 meter and the detention period it is uh, it is between 4 to 8 hours for municipal sewages okay so you can uh, underline or you can uh, need to remember this event okay it is 3 to 4.5 meter deep 
4 to 6 meter wide okay length ranges between 20 to 200 meter and detention periods between 4 to 8 hours for municipal sewages so what are the like uh, different methods of emission the different methods of emission you see uh, these are <coughs> So there are like two basic methods for uh, introducing or, uh, by, or for putting the air into the aeration tank. So what are those methods of aeration? That is number one is your diffused air aeration or it is also known as air air diffusion. Okay. And number two is your mechanical aeration. These two are the main but sometimes also you can find the combination of both the diffused air and mechanical aeration which it is uh, like together known as your combined aeration okay so like uh, let us study something about the diffused air aeration so in the diffused air aeration method your compressed air is uh, like introduced into the aeration chamber and what under pressure of there is a pressure that is your 35 to 70 kilonewton per meter square okay uh, through diffusion plates or other devices so there are some diffusion plates or like other devices called diffusers okay through the diffusers your air or sorry compressed air uh, it is introduced into the aeration chamber under a pressure of what 35 to 70 kilonewton per meter square okay so the main criteria or the main condition for selection of a particular diffuser is what it is that it should be capable of diffusing air in small bubbles okay so the main criteria is that the diffusing okay it should be able to uh, like uh, diffuse the air in small bubbles okay so as to provide the greatest possible efficiency of aeration so like <clears throat> if it um, diffuse the air in small bubbles so it gives like the best uh, aeration process okay it gives the best possible efficiency for aeration then again your porous plates and porous tubes made of quartz or crystalline alumina are generally used as your diffuser so what is the material used for your diffusers it is your porous plates and porous tubes okay what is it is made up of it is made up of quartz or crystalline alumina or it's also known as your aluminium oxide okay so those are used these materials are being used for your use uh, in your diffusers so uh, these plates these are generally uh, these are square in shape and also it has a dimension of what 30 centimeter by 30 centimeter and they are 25 mm thick okay so like uh, these dimensions are given uh, about the like the whole tank or the whole diffuser thing the these dimensions are given okay <clears throat> you can see then that these plates or these tube diffusers these are generally 60 centimeter long okay you this, this all these things you can study by yourself okay what are the like uh, this uh, dimensions and all you can study so like number one the main thing is that here in diffused air aeration your compressed air is uh, introduced into the aeration chamber okay like and the what is the pressure it is 35 to 70 kilometer per meter square okay so now <coughs> okay so in the mechanical aeration let us see what is there so in the air diffusion method as pointed out above a lot of compressed air gets wasted as it simply escapes through the tank without giving oxygen to the sewage okay although it helps in bringing about the required agitation of sewage mixture okay <clears throat> so what happens in your uh, air diffusion method is that here uh, a lot of you know like compressed air is given and also a lot of compressed air it gets wasted because this waste or this compressed air it gets like it escapes okay through the tank also without giving oxygen to the sewage so here in uh, this uh, 
uh, this uh, sorry mechanical aeration so if why mechanical aeration is done okay it is to, in order to affect the affect the economy or uh, like uh, atmospheric air it is brought in contact with the sewage in the mechanical aeration method so in this method the sewage it is being stirred up by means of mechanical devices okay so uh, mechanical devices like there are pa pedals okay pedals or also it is known as your surface aerators okay so these pedals they are being used in order to introduce the air into it from the atmosphere okay by continuously changing the sur like uh, surface of sewage by the circulation so there is a you know like constant circulation of sewage from bottom to top okay so i will let me show you there must be one diagram let me show you <clears throat> okay this one you see so these are pedals okay these pedals they are constantly changing the direction and through with the help of this mechanical like mechanical uh, pedals so what happens here your air is uh, like introduced in the uh, tank okay okay then okay so your uh, this mechanical air diffused air aeration and mechanical aeration we have studied so next is your actually all these things you know you, uh, for you uh, no need to go in very depth okay so you should know like uh, for your later in elective subject uh, yes you have to go in details uh, then but now you should know the like uh, what is activated sludge okay how the process works all those things you should know okay <clears throat> the names also you should know okay Then, then, okay. So there are like certain uh, you can say design considerations that is involved in activated sludge plant. Okay, so there are certain design considerations, and those are what like number one is your aeration period. This aeration period it is also known as your hydraulic retention time. Just now in the video they have told about all these things, but. Uh, let us see about the formulas and all. So uh, your first one is your aeration period that is your hydraulic retention time and in short it is written as your HRT. Okay. And to, uh, okay, let us see the, what is HRT. So it is like the formula is your volume of the tank divided by rate of sewage flow in the tank. Okay. So the aeration period, it tells about the loading rate at which the sewage is applied to the aeration tank okay it empirically decides the loading rate at which the sewage is applied to the aeration tank so you see here this is uh, the detention period formula okay uh, this uh, volume of the tank that is in v in meter cube and rate of sewage flow in the tank is q in meter cube per day okay so it is v q v by q day so if you convert it to hour so it will be multiplied by 24 okay so this is the formula for your uh, like uh, the expression for your aeration period or hrt that is your hydraulic retention time okay number two is your bod loading or volumetric bod loading okay so volumetric bod loading it is your like another uh, loading parameter or design consideration okay which is used or which is defined as bod5 BOD 5 that is BOD 5 means what BOD at 5 days okay the BOD 5 load applied per unit volume of aeration tank okay so this is your this you see the expression you see like uh, <clears throat> mass of BOD mass of BOD applied per day to the aeration okay mass of BOD applied per day to the aeration tank is equal to what Oh, sorry mass of bod applied per day to the aeration tank through influence sewage okay divided by volume of the aeration tank in meter cube 
so this is your formula this whole thing is your formula that is uh, it's also written is q into y not divided by v okay what is y not y not is your bod5 in milligram per liter okay q is the sewage inflow or sewage flow to the aeration tank and v is your aeration tank volume okay v is your aeration tank volume so this is about your volumetric bod loading so how much of BOD it is being applied or a per unit of the aeration tank, okay? So uh, now next is your food to microorganism ratio. That is, you can also say as FM ratio, okay? FM ratio. So it is uh, like it is an important rational organic loading rate adopted for an activated sludge process. Okay, it is a manner of expressing BOD loading with regard to the microbial mass in the system. The BOD load applied to the system in kg or gram is represented as food and the total microbial suspended solids in the mixed liquid of the aeration tank is represented by M. So this uh, F by M or FM ratio, it tells you about the what it a uh, BOD loading. Okay, BOD loading in regard of what by microbial mass in the system. Okay, so this is your formula. This formula you see daily BOD load applied to the aerator system in gram divided by total microbial mass in the system in gram. So this formula you have to remember. Okay, there is no particular uh, numerical. Uh, we will not do any numerical related to this, but uh, your in short notes or uh, later if any physical classes will be uh, physical exam will be there, then you get you there might be some short notes regarding your food to microorganism ratio or the design consideration of your uh, activated sludge process okay so um, then uh, last one is your like sludge uh, ratio sludge age okay this uh, this sludge age it is like is it is an important operation or it is an important parameter related to the fm ratio okay it is may it may be defined this sludge age age it is may it may be defined as the average time for which particles of suspended solids remain under addition so it is it tell it gives you the average time okay it gives you the average time for which the particles of the suspended solids it remains under aeration okay so it does indicates the residence time of biological solids in the system so you just remember that uh, with this large age it gives you the uh, average time for which the particles of the suspended solids it remains in the uh, or it is under aeration okay so <clears throat> okay so uh, like uh, there are some advan you know like uh, it, a question might be asked like this that uh, between your uh, activated sludge process and trickling filter process okay which one would you prefer or and uh, the choice of one okay which one would you prefer so like this a question also might come or like what are the advantages of activated sludge process over trickling filter process okay the same thing same question is there so uh, you have to know the advantages and disadvantages also of your activated sludge process okay so you see here so what's written that the conventional biological treatment of sewage it is usually carried out either by trickling filters or by using an activated sludge process so two processes we have studied in your secondary uh, treatment okay one is your attached and one is your suspension which one is attached and which one is suspension so suspension is your activated sludge process and attached one is your trickling filter one okay so the basic difference between an activated sludge process and the action and the action involved in the trickling filter is that whereas in a trickling filter uh, like uh, uh, the bacterial film coating the grains of the filter media is stationary 
okay like uh, now i told you and likely to become clogged after some time so it is attached and the filter media it is the medium of the like filter it is uh, the bacterial film coating the the grains of the filter media it is stationary okay and also this might get clogged after some time and in the activated sludge process what happens on the other hand the finer suspended organic particles of sewage are themselves coated with the bacterial film which is kept moving by the constant agitation so here you are in presence of air so the whole thing the whole uh, this bacterial film or the uh, this uh, microorganisms they are kept moving in the constant agitation okay so in this uh, in the activated sludge process the sludge flocks are coated with bacteria okay and they act like a uh, free moving organisms okay and uh, for which are con being continuously swept through the sewage and which is and which in their search of food and water oxidize the organic matter present in the sewage in a much more efficient way than the carried out in a filter okay so here uh, like basically this thing we have already just now we have explained okay the same thing is written here so they have just make it like for a like a difference thing okay they have made a difference one so here um, you can write out the you can pick out the important lines and you can write it down so like difference you should write in points i would prefer that you will write in points okay so here these points are given okay uh, this you see advantages offered by an activated sludge plant so five uh, five points are given and again disadvantages are also given you see here in point is written okay five points you have you, you can write it from here okay okay <clears throat> okay five points okay so um your treatment process is basically it is finished okay but some uh, this septic tank and some uh, oxidation poles uh, all these are uh, left that i can finish in one class okay monday uh, wednesday okay so wednesday i will finish your treatment process okay after your treatment process uh, uh, basically your module 2 it might be finished let's see i have to see the syllabus okay <clears throat> Okay. I forgot to bring the attendance sheet, so uh, I will write down the roll numbers. Okay, I will. You just tell me who those who are present. Okay. Roll number one is present. Ma'am. Okay. Present. One, two. Yes, ma'am. Three. Present, ma'am. Four. Present, ma'am. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Nine is present. Okay, nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Present, ma'am. Twelve. Okay, thirteen. Yes, ma'am. Okay, 14, 15, 16, 17, yes, 17, 18. Yes, ma'am. 18 is present. Yes, ma'am. Okay, 19. Yes, ma'am. Okay, 20. Present, ma'am. Okay, 21. 22 yes ma'am 23 yes ma'am 24 25 present ma'am 26 present ma'am okay 27 28 ma'am 28 29 30 Yep. Present, ma'am. Thirty present. Twenty-nine is present or what? Yes, ma'am. Okay. 
Twenty-nine, thirty, and thirty-one. Absent. Thirty-two. Present, ma'am. Okay, thirty-three. Yes, ma'am. Thirty-four. Thirty-five. Thirty-six. Okay, thirty-four is present. Thirty-four. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thirty-five. Thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty. Yes, ma'am. Okay, forty, forty-one. Present, ma'am. Forty-two. Forty-three. Present, ma'am. Forty-four. Forty-five. Forty-six. Okay, forty-five yes, present. Okay, forty-six present. Forty-seven. Forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, fifty. Anyone is left out? Your number eleven. Okay, then. Anyone else? Forty, forty. I have given. Be Michelle. I have given. Next, anyone else left up? Okay, then. I think no one is left out. Okay, then.